Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a hand tinted effect in Lightroom. Before we get started on the tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the final image here or an indication as to what we're trying to achieve. And this is the original image. So this image was originally in color and what I've done is convert it to black and white and then apply this hand tinted effect to it, which allows us to change the colors in the image. So let's look and see how we would do this. And we're going to move to a new version of this same image to do so. So here's the image that I was working with and the first thing that I would do with any image and what I've already done with this one is to adjust the tonal range. So I have a good range of tones and I'm seeing lights and darks in the image where I want to see them. So I would work through the basic panel and make those adjustments before I begin. Having done that, it's time to go to black and white. So I'm going to click black and white here in the develop module. And this converts the image to black and white, but it also opens up this panel, which allows me to adjust which colors go to black and which colors go to white. So this underlying image had quite a bit of orange in it, which is in this sort of red orange area here. So if we want to, we could lighten up that area of the image by just dragging on these sliders. Lightening it up will allow us to apply a color to that area, perhaps a little bit more easily later on. If an area is darker, then we're going to get more of a tint and a little bit less of the coloring perhaps that we may want. But you can adjust these sliders to get exactly the balance of black and white that you want. And you can also do it later on once you've applied the color. So it's not sort of like you have to get it perfectly right before you start. Once you've got your black and white, it's time to go to the adjustment brush. And here it is up here just below the histogram. And it's on the very far right of this panel. So I'm going to click to select the adjustment brush. The first thing I want to do is make sure all of these sliders are set to zero. Now all of mine are, but let's just set some to some different values and say that by double clicking this effect here, this word effect, we can zero all these sliders and clear any color. So that's a handy keystroke to know, well a handy feature to know. Just double click the word effect. Now I'm going to select the color to work with. So I'm going to open the color picker here and I'm going to select a color and I'm going to paint this area of the tram. So I think I'll paint that in a sort of turquoise blue. So let's go and get the turquoise blue color to work with and just close this panel. Now I'm going to click somewhere in the area that I want to start my painting. So I'm going to paint in this area. And the reason why I click here is to set this edit point because that's the point that then pegs this adjustment brush setting. So later on, if we want to change the setting, we need to select this particular peg. So I'm just going to go and paint over the areas in the image that I want to color with this sort of aqua blue sort of turquoise-ish color. It's actually probably coming out a little bit more blue than I wanted, but that doesn't really matter because right now I'm just concentrating on the painting and in a minute I can actually concentrate a little bit more on fine-tuning the color I want to use. Now I have Auto Mask selected and I want that to be selected because it will allow me to work into areas because there's quite a bit of edge detail in this image. It's fairly clear where the edges are and using Auto Mask allows me to paint more accurately. I don't have to paint along these edges really carefully because the Auto Mask is doing that for me but I will have to touch up some areas. Now, one of the ways I can touch up is by shrinking the brush down using the square bracket key or this size tool here. And I can also switch to the eraser and that allows me to erase color. So I've got color here probably that I didn't want. So I can just erase it by holding the Alt key or switching to the eraser. And then I can go back and continue to paint and I just want to pick up all the areas that I want to color with this color. Now I can also use some of the adjustments here. So if it's too light, I can drop the highlights down a little bit and I can even drop the exposure down. So I can control some of this effect with the actual 
effect options that I have here for just this selected area. It's not the entire image, it's only the area that we're working with. So I might want to make some adjustments like this and I may want to also change the colour. So I can go back in and maybe let's go and get something a little bit more green and perhaps let's take the saturation down. So I'm really getting a tint rather than a colour. But you can do this to suit yourself. I'm ready to switch to another colour and I think I might just do these stop lights here right now. So let's click on New because that allows me to create a new colour and I'm going to click where I want to start the colour which is in this area. Now let's go and pick a really heavy red because we want to make an effect on these stop lights and we won't be able to get much of an effect unless we actually really do make it quite red. So I want to colour both these lights in here. Now if I want to get rid of the pin so I don't see it, I can just click Never there and that will allow me to paint over this area a little bit more accurately. But again with hand tinting it really doesn't matter too much about accuracy because we're used to seeing a little bit of sort of over spill so that actually gives it more of the effect that we're looking at. I'm going to set my pins back to Always so that I can see them. So let's go to a new colour, click New and then click on an area that we're going to colour. I think I'll do the top here of the tram and I'll go and select a colour for it. I can do that at any time, I don't have to do it first up. I can paint first and colour second, whatever I want to do. I'm going to make the brush a little bit larger, again using the square bracket key. I've got my auto mask turned on so I'm just going to go and paint over the area that I want to affect. And again, if I don't like this colour, it's really easy for me to change this to whatever I want to change it to. You can also adjust the area to perhaps reduce the exposure here. Give it a more gritty look. And if I don't like the colour, I can just come in here and experiment with different colours. And because the colour has already been painted onto the image, this selection is live so I can test different colour combinations to see what I might want to use in this situation. And it, you can see that the image is changing as I'm moving the colour picker. So I actually might go for this sort of dingy blue here and then click to get rid of the colour selector. So I'm going to call this good for right now. So I'm going to click Done and let's just see how far we've come. If I press the backslash key, I'll see the before image and here is the after image. We're able to affect this colour tint by first converting the image to black and white and then apply colour to it using this adjustment brush. This allows us to paint colour onto the image. Now you don't have to paint all the areas of the image, you can just spot colour it, you could um, paint the road, you could paint the back area or you could just leave that in black and white. There are a whole lot of things that you can do with this image using this very simple technique with the adjustment brush in Lightroom. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.